Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and today we are going to be tumbling again. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Alright, I forgot to do something. Let's make sure we're getting the freshest posts. I didn't even know this was an LGBT bar when I arrived. I wasn't even gay when I got here. When I got there. But after a great night of food, drink, and men, I sure am now. Great place. A man walked straight into a bar and then came out. <laughs> the scary thing about dating <laughs> is that you are either going to marry that person or break up. Deep thoughts from an anus. I like it deep. Some of these posts. I wonder how the heck they aren't marked as not safe for work. Headlights before electricity was discovered. Listen, I know objectively this is any car mod, but like you have to admit, in terms of ridiculousness, this is pretty freaking sick. Yeah, this is pretty sick. Love, when you, you saw a cat from doing something and instead of understanding what, that they shouldn't be doing that thing, they're just like, Ah, uh, sorry my good sir, you seem to have interrupted me. No worries, let me just should be past you and get a taste of that pan of hot oil, please. Ah, you have plopped me onto the floor? Heavens all the time, my man. Pardon me while I have up back at, at, onto the counter that's covered in, in, in jalapenos. Ah, I see you've kept the you have pushed a cup of water further from the edge of the table. Easy mistake, good sir. Let me help you get that emptied. All over your bed! Cats. As cats owner, it's really like to joke about how the cat is the one who's really in charge, but let's be honest here. My cats think they're in charge, but they're also freaking dumb. It's sort of an incompetent king and long suit offering advice arrangement. If the king were prone to getting their heads stuck in Kleenex boxes. Me, disangling my cat's claw from the blankets for the third time. I'm very good, sir. I think I've actually had to do that before. Hey, don't, don't cry. Crush, crush two cloves of olive into a pot with a dollop of olive oil. No, two cloves of garlic into a pot with a dollop of olive oil. And stir until golden and add one can of crushed tomatoes with a bit of balsamic vinegar, half a tablespoon of brown sugar, half a cup of gravy parmesan and cheese. Is it served for a few minutes, adding a few... A handful of fresh spinach until no wilted and mix in pasta of your choice, okay? One sec, I'll make this. Holy shit. Peace and love. I don't know what you just made, but it sounds really good. Okay. So there's a game me and my friends play it called Don't Get Me Started and basically someone gives another person a random topic and they have to go on an angry rant about it and it's the best thing that's ever happened to us at parties and car rides so I highly recommend in playing sometimes with your friends. I have to play this game now. Hmm. <sighs> You apply for 20 jobs on Indeed. The silence is deafening. You apply for 20 jobs on Indeed. Half of them require you to create an account on the company website. You leave a trail of ghost accounts that will be used once and never again. You never receive a response.
You apply for 20 jobs on Indeed. One employer offers an interview, but it's so rare that you, for you to receive any response that you forget to check the website and you miss the time. You apply for 20 jobs on Indeed. One of employer offers an interview, but you don't know the magic words that signal to the esoteric mind of an interviewer that you're fit for the job. You apply for 20 jobs on Indeed. One employer emails you saying that unfortunately you don't have, out have the qualifications we are looking for. You check the job again and see you apply to a mental, I mean your labor, or you apply for 20 jobs on Indeed. Have to require a car. Don't stop to ask how you afford to afford one with no job. You apply for 20 jobs on Indeed. One employer offers a job. The commute makes you want to die in your sleep. You call the HR or manager for the workplace and helps arranging an interview more directly. They don't even have an answering machine. Employers complain that no one wants to work anymore. Yeah, pretty much. Oh dear. Here's a long picture. I think this is going to be a long one. Do you think so as well? Fuck. Official fuck, you called. Shit, not you. Official shit. Okay, and? How many of you are there? Person to have 10k to me. <laughs> Don't do this to me! Official piss. I'm here too. Joke is over, buddy boy. Joke is over, bot. Joke is over. <laughs> I've been hit over the head multiple times with a company. <laughs> Large mouths right, bunch of clouds right now. Clouds with mallets. No! <laughs> Ah, you're killing me! No, I am. I'm simply a ghost now. No, that's me. <laughs> this pose is rapidly spiraling out of control. I pointed out typos. You. <laughs> Spirally. <laughs> Official fuck. Yes? Oh, hey, they use a colon 3. I love colon 3. It's my favorite it, it number or letter thing. <sighs> Electric stoves aren't real, by the way. They're placebo stoves. Your food cooks because of the placebo effect. Yeah, no, it's just a bunch of LEDs that turn red. It only boils water because you expect the water to boil. Okay, explain my I I completely burned arm that I I, I dipped into boiling water or uh, curiosity on my electric stove. What do we say to the god of death? Knock knock. Who's there? It's September. Hope you're ready to bang like a screen door in a hurricane. My goodness. Okay, I'm really curious what the heck this is going to lead to. Okay, so Victorian Erotica is literally the most heinous, morally bankrupt, horrific crap I've ever read. And I've read a fair bit, partly from historical interest, but also because a while back I helped a friend with University for Irish choosing about censorship and pornography in 19th century England. Anyway, I need to share with you the most hilarious line that was ever written. So, here, 1887.
Let us fuck, piously ejaculated the superior, whose prick was at that moment at Bella's lips. Amen, chanted Ambrose. The third ecclesiate was silent, but she used penis menace disguise. What? I like this excerpt. It's significantly it's significant enhanced by knowing that the novel in question is first person narrative, great from the perspective of an inexplicably a sapient flea who lives on Bella's body, and that's why the third priest penis is described in this way. From the narrator's perspective, it literally blots out the sky. <laughs> Me, when I'm a flea? Oh my goodness. Official sky menacing penis pose. <laughs> what the heck? I think I figured out where ADHD comes from. <clears throat> A creature that was, in hindsight, clearly was a fae. Hey, can I have your attention? Us, young and foolish. Yeah, what's up? The fae. <laughs> the DD campaign of all AHG adventurers fuck up to the fae world that took their attention to get it back. Got the amount of side quests that campaign would entail. Screw it, I'm in ADHD and D. It's an epic quest. <sighs> In my day, we had no narcissistic selfie sticks. You just paid a man to come to your house and paint you surrounded by your possessions. This tweet is everything. I used to work at the National Gallery in London. Old men and came up to me fairly eagerly to complain about the young girls, and sometimes the Tories, as of a particular ethnicity or nationality, taking selfies with the art. I'd smile and say it's an interesting in the pitch because so many of the most celebrated works in the gallery are, are portraits, the selfies of yesteryear, and indeed, Von Eich's portrait of a man, 1433, may be the earliest known panel self-portrait, and the very least in at the very least in Western art history. So, for himself in that context, comparing the methods of portrait over a span of a little over eight six hundred years, is at its heart a commentary on the human desire to remember and be remembered, to catalog one's existence and give it authenticity. They did not like that, let me tell you. Well, of course they didn't. They want someone to share in their bigotry. The blue underline in Google Docs is made of my existence. Sorry I phrased something in a way that conveys the emotion, image, and syntax I wanted instead of adhering to grammar or guidelines. Should I end myself? Honestly, let's also remember that most of these grammar guidelines are based on an old-fashioned bullcrap that nobody cares about out in 2023, including racism. And classism. No, I remember about that. Like, ain't is a word, and it used to be used by the rich people until all poor people started using it. Pretty cool how you went on a heroic journey to gain the power needed to defeat me. Unfortunately, I was on a cooler, villainous journey. <laughs> Fucking losing it at the cost of a reverse Holmes and Watson. Like there's a is genius journalist who goes around solving crimes and writes about how he does it, and then there's this useless himbo oh his, uh, his assistant who does the freak all and just follows him around absolutely out of his mind on cocaine. Tintin. What? Hey, hey, why didn't that load? Now I have to scroll all the way back down there.
Oh my goodness. Open it. Let's continue. This is going to take a moment. Burglar, gently waking me. You live like this? So I heard this story secondhand many years ago, but the guess, but the gist was that a friend of, of a friend, damn, I cannot pronounce words right ever, can I? And what was generally he considered a bad neighborhood because he was super poor or cultured and it was what he could afford. He didn't have any furniture, he just slept on a blanket on the floor and had a milk crate for a chair and like an old wire spool as a table. No TV, nothing in the fridge, no microwave, basically just bare walls and a roof to keep the weather off. So one day he comes home and there's a man in his apartment just standing there with this look of utter, uh, utter amazement and horror on his face. I turns to the guy who's just entered and says, This is your place? Cause I broke it to rob you, but... Shit, man. You ain't got nothing. Wait here, I'm gonna be right back. And the burglar left, leaving a puzzle college student alone in his empty apartment. But sure enough, the burglar came back a while later and brought some friends, and they delivered a table, a couple of chairs, and a small TV. I think I got you a bed too, but that might take a couple old days. So the poor college student made some friends, and he didn't ask where they got the stuff. Oh, gee. Chaotic good. <laughs> I hope they marked this place as do not rob or something. Through autism and necromancy, everything is possible. Hmm, true. I don't have the necromancy part down, but I definitely have the other part down. <sighs> I asked my dad to help me replace the motherboard of my Xbox, and you just said, Do I look like a freaking rocket scientist? My dad worked for NASA? How is practice going? Terrible. I want to stab everyone here. Okay. Just don't get any blood on your clothes. You're a police officer. You shouldn't be condoning this. Don't tell me how to live my life. Save energy. One time I was texting my father and dad at saying it was lit and he responded, Please don't say that. <laughs> I'm not sure if he responded out of your cringe or just don't light things on fire, please. <sighs> Canadian police find drugs, firearms, and the dread blade of the Lich King in a raid, which they're underwhelmingly, underwhelmingly, which they underwhelmingly describe as a sword. Yeah, that's pretty lame. Frostmorn hungers for more cocaine. No, Frostmorn. We're getting you off that. Blood the incense, fine. Cocaine, no, that's a felony. So, my grandpa ate half a quart of paint today, think it was yogurt. I think I've read this before. Update, his stomach's completely unfazed. Sweet Jesus, Grandpa! That's not yogurt! You're eating bare 84, 84C for own green! My stomach is unfazed. <laughs> like, jokes aside, this is so scary and sad. I really hope he's still okay. Don't worry, he's okay. He posted this on Instagram a few days ago. Apparently, I paid this morning, but hashtag no hashtag regrets. 
Fudge could, uh, Poison Control laughed at me, but they said I'll be fine. It was this recently as well. Baked beads are way better than paint. So yeah, it's really a shade I went through that, but at least it's healthy and safe. I didn't see the last picture last time. The only version of this I reblog because I am thankful he is safe. Is no one going to talk about the fact that his username is It's Bobby Bitch? What a legend. Dang, I'm really swearing a lot in this video. I hope I don't get stricken. I'm gonna get smited by a YouTube. Dear sci fi people, intergalactic means between galaxies. Interstellar means between star systems. Interplanetary means in between planets. On conflict, which is entirely confined to one galaxy and only fought by powers from that galaxy, or control of that galaxy, is not intergalactic. Okay, nerd. You are on the nerd website. It would be intergalactic. My fate, one of my favorite dramas of probably unintentional comedy, is mind blowing insane facts that you sometimes find in Wikipedia biographies. Written in the exact same tone and manner as every other piece of generic personal information. McGowan is a Roman Catholic, describing himself as a free thinking religious fanatic. Who also praised the Buddha as an adolescent, and he considered the priesthood. Ireland, where Gon began drinking at age five, when his family gave him, and this is to help him sleep. And his father frequently took him to the local pub while he drank with his friends. In 2015, McGowan admitted he regretted not joining the IRA. Just the cold and personal writing style, the the lack of context or elaboration, coupled with some of the craziest combinations of words you can think of. This tickles my funny butt for some reason. Wait, this guy says he's a religious, he's a free-thinking religious fanatic? Those are, what's the word, antonyms. They are contradictory terms. You can't be free thinking and be a religious fanatic. Those are the exact opposite. Going with my friend tomorrow to watch a movie, e T M N T Teenage Mutant Nitro Olin. The red logo and phrase is now in the public domain and can be used on packaging or in business with no fee and without trademark infringement. As seen on TV. Wait, you could put this logo on anything? As seen on wherever I feel like. Oh gosh. Oh no. Who's getting tortured more in this video? Me or you? Oh, I'm kidding. It's me. I have to actually read the thing. Oh my goodness. Hey, don't cry. 99 bottles of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 98 bottles of beer in the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 97 bottles of beer in the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 96 balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 95 balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 95 balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 94 balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 93 balls of beer on the wall. Hey, don't cry. 92 balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 91 balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 9 balls of beer on the wall. Hey, don't cry. 89 balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 88 bottles of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 87 bottles of beer on the wall, okay? <coughs> hey, don't cry. 86 bottles of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 85 bottles of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 84 bottles of beer on the wall, okay? 
Hey, don't cry. 83 balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 82 balls of beer on the wall. Don't cry. 81 balls of beer on the wall. Don't cry. 80 balls of beer on the wall. I am not reading this out. Don't cry. 79 bottles. 78, 77, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, 71, 70. 69, 68, 67, 66, 65, 64, 63, 62, 61, 60, 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. And I'll do these ones. Hey, don't cry. 10 balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 9 balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 8 balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. 7 balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. Six balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. Five balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. Four balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. Three balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. Two balls of beer on the wall, okay? Hey, don't cry. One bottle of beer on the wall, okay? Cry. No more. Hey. Don't cry. Zero still never beer bottles on the wall. They really did that. Don't bottle up your tears. I should have read that. I'm glad I more or less just skipped that one because that probably would have made this a, an hour long video and I don't have time for that. Well, that's because I don't want to break my internet trying to upload that again. After that, night, that um, I think it was SCP-96 video, I just don't have the time to break my internet like that anymore. Anyway. There are many funny things about Kingdom Hearts, but for me, the funniest part is that it's an indie scene where there's supposed to be a big crowd, but the devs didn't want to model literally anyone, so it's just a huge empty room with only the absolutely necessary characters there. Literally, freaking no one is there. Comedy gold. You kidding? Listen to those cheers, man. <laughs> yeah, look at all those people. There's nothing there. It makes me think that, that a lot of people in um, Kingdom Hearts are just delusional. I think there's people when there aren't any. Particularly with crowds, and only crowds. Maybe crowds are invisible in Disney. Who knows? Dream of Cars 4 where someone made a biological clone of lightning. I had a dream last night that Pixar released Cars 4. The premise was that it was several years after Cars 3. Lightning was fully retired from racing, enjoying life, being Cruz's manager, but still wondering if he ever reached his full potential as a racer. Suddenly, Lightning learns that one of his old rivals stole some of Lightning's DNA and used that to make a younger clone of Lightning somehow. This younger clone, this younger Lightning was built with all the latest racing technology and because he never had the character development that old Lightning had, was far more selfish, arrogant, and reckless. New Lightning tells old Lightning that he's a fraud and he's a real Lightning now. As real lightning would never lose or give up the old, or way old lightning did. And that old lightning should know that I didn't support new lightning as his son. New lightning then begins winning races often in a way a better than old lightning ever could even in his prime. Old lightning is conflicted. On the one hand, he is proud of what his, his technique is, is his son doing better than he ever could and wants to support him and reach his full potential to do what old lightning could. But not. But doing so would require him to leave Cruz and Radio Springs and side with its rival. But on the other hand, this approves of his methods and attitudes. Cruz may not be as experienced or, or talented as a better 
eraser, but he ha it has a better heart, according to Old, old Lightning. Also, the music that plays idea of the Erase of the Tree was Starships by Nicki Minaj. You may... <clears throat> you may be my, my biological clone, son, and I love you, but you're also selfish and arrogant and nothing like me. The future is now, old man. I'm better than you. I'm the real Lightning McQueen now. I'll show you what Lightning McQueen should have been. Now playing Nicki Minaj. <laughs> What a fun timeline that would be. <sighs> She's being weird again. On her, her invisible penny farting. Oh my goodness, it's an invisible bike! Invisible bikes, remember those? Is there a word that's a mix between angry and sad? Malcontented, disgruntled, miserable, desolated. Smad. There are two types of people. <laughs> On my way to raid Area 51, guys. The longer it takes for this to come across your dash, the funnier it is. It's most funny just because now it's Edge and and Explorer doesn't even exist anymore, which just makes it even more hysterically funny. Sometimes I see things that are so absurdly oriented that it circles back to being sexless. You know what I mean? Like, and I see really horny art if you don't care, just where these sex units are so generic, their boobs are cartoonishly large, and they have a waist the size of an atom and some vacant eye girl stare, etc. I'm just like, hmm, this is so un 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 uninteresting and kind of repulsive. I think I'd be more aroused by a tin can. I've had those moments, yeah. My history teacher was taking role today and it ex exaggerated formal, formal titles for everyone. Example, Mr. Last Name, Mr. Last Name, because... As he's glassy like that, but my bi non binary eyes was like, uh oh, uh oh. And if I gets me and goes, Miss is bobbin. And I go here, and he looks at me, furrows his brow, and goes, Is that your preferred pronoun? And I'm like, nah. And he goes, okay, what is it? And it's like, um, they, there. He says, okay, what horrible title would you like me to use? I mean, uh, I don't know. Him, would you rather I don't use one? Yeah. Then there's completely accepting straces and great 40 year old dude goes, hmm, what about Colonel? And he gets all excited, I'm like, I actually love that, because perfect. Colonel Bobbin, I'm like, here, he moves like under his breath, that's a dope-ass form of abbreviation. And since this is the teacher, the class doesn't say darn thing other than correct themselves with my pronouns. Then goes along with the rest of the roll call, like he doesn't, and like then just bless my entire life. Then for the rest of the class, he referred to me as Colonel. I still want to say 
a, a colonel because that's how it's freaking spelt. And English is drunk. And I'm not sure if that's English or what. What language did we get the word curdle from? Probably French. We get a lot of our weirder words that don't seem to be spelt the way they're pronounced from um, a lot of different languages. But English does that at, on its own anyway. Barbie from the Barbieverse could kill Macbeth. She's a woman, or technically a doll, which also counts for the gender clause, and she seemed to come down from the sky at the beginning of the Barbie movie, qualifying her for the birth clause. Yes, Barbie Handler, aka Barbie from the Barbie movie, could kill Macbeth. Being a woman, it, it created it through Lilko's imagination, Barbie applies for the gender clause and the unconventional birth clause. Thank you for your submission. I almost died when I was born, so I'm unconventional. And also, I'm literally just chaos incarnate. Fuck you. <laughs> Epic win! Gets mad cow disease. Epic fail. <laughs> yeah. Imagine dealing with an international crisis involving precious artifacts, and someone's like, Don't worry, I know a guy. And a story working with Connecticut college professor, Esther named Henry, who slips into his son's under, and so I think he's capable of saving the world with the power of his whip and fedora. You don't know where the guy is, and you don't know where the guy is going, but you know he's on the case with a 98 success rate, and his tits are out. Okay, this has to be the last one. <clears throat> Okay, thanks. That's definitely the last one, but damn, it's a long one. Let's heck and go. I'm swearing a lot more in these videos. This is gonna get bad. Dihydrogen monoxide with an acid level with is an acid with a pH level of seven. That's higher pH level than any other acid. Why would anyone want to consume it? I teach my 7th graders about the dangers of dihydrogen monoxide. I bring in a graduate cylinder of when we talk about how it's used in nuclear power or plants and to GMO crops. All crops are GMO, by the way. Everything you eat is GMO. In some way, shape, or form, it has been genetically modified. If it's a, it's a, if it's a domesticated animal, it's GMO. If it's a, a fruit or vegetable, it's GMO. All your are bananas. It's longer than your pinky. That's GMO. How inhaling even the small amount that I'm holding can lead to suffocation or even death. It's found in vaccines and cancer cells, but also in infant and formula and pet food. It is a huge component of acid rain and can cause severe burns and has been found in places that were thought to be the most foreseen and unfamiliar locations on Earth. We talk about how there are little to no regulations on this chemical, no bans, no warning labels, and most manufacturers don't even have to exclude others of their use of it in their products. My students are outraged. We talk about what we could do, create flyers and create posters of flyers to spread awareness, contact our senators with petitions to ban DHML, so as our information all over our social media. Then I explain the real problem with dihydrogen monoxide is that when I am thirsty, there is just nothing else that's refreshing. Then I watch her looks of absolute shock and horror as I drink the entire vial. I freaking love this. This is how misinformation works. How propaganda works. How manipulation works. May our education be stronger than fake news. Amen. For those who don't get it, dihydrogen monoxide is a chemical name for water, aka H2O. Another important element of understanding in a joke is understanding how pH levels work. Alright, so pH it goes from 1 to 14, with 1 being battery acid and 14 being drink cleaner. Then you have sued, which is gastric acid. 
three. Did I just say sue instead of two? <laughs> or you have three, which is hydrochloric acid. Four, which is soda. Five, which is acid rain. Six, which is black coffee. Damn, soda is more acidic than acid rain. That is crazy. Anyway, seven, which is urine and saliva, which you have in your body all the time. And eight, which is pure water. Or I, I think it's more like eight, seven and a half. S eight. Eight, which is seawater, or, or, or nine, baking soda, then a milk of magnesium, alu ammonia, soapy water, leach, and drain cleaners must act line and on this scale that we're seeing here. Yep, that's a higher number, all right. Everyone who has ever touched or consumed this chemical has died. Stop drinking water. Everyone who's ever drunk water has died. Not really. That's that's a lie. Okay. This is the last one. There are ley lines beneath the earth. Not a fictional, but simple concrete fact. They course beneath the first the surface. Pathways of immense coursing energy that stings as it laps against bedrock. It is a song that screams dread into all who hear it. A song that tears that tears holes between the land of the living and the land of the dead. The well of power contained in these lines could level cities if we knew how to harness. But we know no such magic. And the only spell ley lines can cast on their own, unfortunately, is earthquake with a ninth level of spell of slot. So they're talking about what are they called? Um, what else? Is called fault lines. That's what they're called. I forgot what they were called. Anyway, that was Tumblr. If you liked this video, please leave a like on this video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. I barely even know what I'm doing today. So until then, goodbye.